Spending as much time as I can in my garden is a lot of fun, but dealing with pests, well, that's a different story. Hi, I'm Alan Smith. Let's talk pest control coming up next. I'm Alan Smith. If your garden is like mine, it can sometimes be the victim of some pesky little creatures such as snails and slugs, spider mites and white flies. But I've got some good news. It doesn't have to be that way. You see, there's some ways to prevent them from wreaking havoc on your garden and the environment. We're going to take a look at a few of those ways. These beauties can really hold their own when it comes to pests, especially white flies and bad nematodes. I'll also show you how goldfish and toads can all be beneficial partners in your fight against pesky unwanted visitors. And how about a hot pepper sauce recipe that will keep pests on the run? There's a little food for thought. Also, I wanna share with you one of my favorite plants. You see, it's a coleus that's virtually pest free. Plus, the more sun it gets, the more colorful it becomes. But first, let's get on the road and head to Gonzales, California, where we'll meet up with some very friendly garden helpers. That's all next, so don't go away. Welcome back. Besides being fun to watch, ducks can be a great help in the garden, specifically getting rid of some of those common nuisances like slugs and snails. A place that prides itself on raising these comical birds is Metzer Farms in Gonzales, California. I always look forward to the arrival of spring, even though it represents extra work for me in the garden. But along with Easter can come garden helpers that can keep certain pests under control. Ducks can be one of the best ways to deal with slugs and snails in the garden. This little guy is only a couple of hours old, but since he has plenty of egg yolks still stored in his system, he won't need to eat for a couple of days so he can be shipped anywhere in the world. In just a matter of weeks, these day-old ducklings will double and triple in size, seemingly overnight. They'll turn into slug-eating machines. They love the flavor of them, and a few ducks can eat hundreds of them in a day. Now, if you think domesticated ducks only come in one model, like the standard Pekin duck from Nursery Rhymes, you better look again. These solid black ones with a green sheen are called Cayugas, and the ruins are a French breed that look like a big, fat mallard. And if you love the duck in the movie Babe as much as I did, you won't be able to resist these slender Indian runner ducks. Having a few ducks around can be entertaining and a lot of fun for children. But the best reason for me as a gardener is that it makes slugs and snails a part of the food chain. Another common problem is the white fly. These little guys may be small, but one of the ironies of gardening is that often some of the smallest pests can create the biggest nuisance. Let me give you an example. I know this little angel's trumpet doesn't look like much now. It's because it's just getting over an infestation of white flies. But if you could have seen it last year, it was spectacular. It was covered with these long, peach-colored, trumpet-shaped blossoms, and the foliage was a rich green. As you can see, the white flies have just about drained all of the life out of this little plant. You can see the evidence of their damage and the lack of vigor in the plant and the discoloration of the leaves. Before they were a rich green and now they've turned the sickly yellow. You can tell that you have white flies by doing a simple test. Just shake the foliage and if a cloud of white insects fly out, then you've spotted the culprit. I was able to get this infestation of white fly under control with repeated applications of an insecticidal soap. Now, for this to work best, you'd really need to soak the underside of the leaves and the top of the plant all the way down to the base. My second line of defense is to use these sticky white fly traps. You see, the color yellow is attractive to white flies and other insects, so they're drawn onto it, stick, and eventually die. Now, you can pick these up at your local garden center, and they're easy to apply. If you'd like more information on earth-friendly and safe ways to deal with pests in your garden, just check out our website. Now, if you want to prevent white flies from even coming around your garden, 
I know a plant that's not only beautiful, but can do the job like a champ. I'll tell you more when we come back, so don't go away. Welcome back. Not only are marigolds full of beautiful color, but they'll repel irritating pests such as white flies, and they'll even kill bad nematodes. If you're looking for a flower that can take the heat and will bloom all summer long, you might give marigolds a try. Marigolds have been around for a long time. We've been growing them in our gardens for centuries. They originally came from Mexico, but even though they're an old-fashioned plant, seed breeders are constantly improving them and coming up with new varieties. Marigolds are fast growers, so sometimes when you find them in the garden center, they can be a little root bound. So after you've made your selection, remove them from the cell packs and gently tear the roots apart before planting. In the case of marigolds, what all these blooms are about are to sell the plants, but they're really not necessary to help the plant get established. What I like to do, in fact, is just to snap off these big blooms like that and then plant them. What this does is redirects the plant's energy to the roots. There's plenty of time for blooms later. By the end of the summer, my marigolds can look a little on the worn outside, so I sow a few seed in mid-July for blooms right up until the first frost. With such bright colors, marigolds can have lots of applications. However, one note of caution, if you have problems with slugs and snails, you may want to plant another variety of annual because those pests love the flavor of marigolds and they'll go out of their way to eat them. Petunias, as well as gazanias, can really take the hot summer heat and can serve as good alternatives. A tried and true performer from coast to coast, this little flower will actually winter over in certain parts of the country where temperatures are mild, but in the rest of the country it's considered an annual. Now I like this particular variety called Kiss because it has a tight mounding habit, beautiful for low plantings and borders. The petals are large and the daisy-like flowers sit on top of short, sturdy stems. Now, if you plant Kiss in full sun in the spring, you'll see results until the first frost. Now, since gazanias are so drought tolerant, you want to be careful not to overwater them. Now, one way to check this is to just stick your finger in the soil, and if it's dry down to about an inch, it's time to water them. Try to avoid getting water on the foliage, and water early in the morning so the foliage can dry completely before nightfall. Look at this combination of storm petunias and gazanias. It's a marvelous combination, both in contrasting color and form. If you'd like more information on annuals for your summer garden, just check out our website. Now, another route you can take for pest control is by inviting certain visitors into your garden. Visitors that are helpful, like toads. I know that a toad has a face that only a mother could love. But did you know that one toad can eat from 10 to 20,000 insects a year? You can welcome toads to your garden by offering them a source of water. A garden pool at ground level is the perfect place for them to lay eggs and produce the next generation of toads. And the tadpoles are fun to watch. And housing for the adult toads is equally important. Toad houses can be as elaborate as this bronze garden ornament or as simple as a broken pot partially buried in the soil. Even as whimsical as this little toad house I'm placing here in my shade garden. You have to take housing the toad seriously when you consider they can live from four to 15 years. Talk about a lot of insect control they can provide. And that whole wives' tale about getting warts from handling toads, well, it's just that. It's a wives' tale. It's not true at all. But what you should know about handling toads, well, here's one right here is that they secrete a substance from behind their ears that's poisonous. And you see this tastes bad in the mouths of predators. So when you handle them, you should always wash your hands. Now, if you want more information on how to attract these little garden visitors to your garden, just check out our website. Coming up, we'll explore some more ways you can fight pests in your garden. You don't want to miss it, so stay tuned. Welcome back. Today's show is aptly called Bug Off. Hi, I'm Alan Smith. We're exploring some organic methods for dealing with pests in the garden. These wonderful little Medusa peppers are so visually rich, but they also remind me that hot peppers can be a solution for dealing with pests in the garden. Each year when I'm planting my summer vegetable garden, I try to keep two things in mind. First, always choose plants that can take the heat like tomatoes and basil. 
and then choose plants that have lots of visual interest, whether it's flowers or plants that produce interesting produce, like these ornamental peppers. Over the years, I've developed quite an appreciation for peppers. Now, when it comes to eating them, personally, I go for the sweet varieties. But I've found an application for hot peppers that helps me get rid of pests in my garden. You can actually use a hot pepper wax spray that'll keep pests on the run. This product combines paraffin wax and other ingredients with capsaicin, the chemical naturally found in peppers that makes them hot. When sprayed directly on a plant's foliage, the wax lightly coats it and holds the hot spray in place. I found this to be an effective and organic way dealing with certain pests in the garden, like leaf hoppers, spider mites, and white flies, just to name a few. Now, when you use this, you need to certainly keep it away from children, and you don't want to get any of it in your eyes because it can really burn. But don't be afraid to spray it directly on the produce in your garden. You see it washes off with just a little warm water. Earlier, we visited a California farm where we saw the range of ducks available to gardeners. And it may surprise many that some of our best natural defenses are birds. And if you've been watching this series for any time now, you know I'm a big fan of raising chickens as a pest defense in my garden. You know, the garden is about a lot more than just beautiful flowers and plants. It's really about life. I'm always trying to attract different forms of life to my garden. Now, we're all familiar with attracting butterflies and birds. They add so much grace and color. Over the years, I've discovered that the garden can become even more alive by employing the help of some little garden helpers, like these bantam chickens. These are the pint-sized members of the chicken family. Since they're so small, they really can't do much damage to the garden. They also provide benefits, like eliminating insects, and, well, their droppings can certainly make my plants grow. And they're just a lot of fun to have around to watch. Now let's take a look at another garden helper that's just as colorful. Goldfish are some of the easiest garden pets to care for. It's much more convenient for me to keep them in my garden pool rather than an aquarium or fishbowl. And what a service they provide. They eat mosquito larvae and their waste fertilizes my water plants. You know, I'm always looking for plants that are heat tolerant and are more disease and pest resistant. That's how I came across the Picante series of salvias. I spoke with Joel Goldsmith about this new variety that I've enjoyed trying in my garden. Joel, I'm just knocked out by all the wonderful varieties of flowers here at the marketplace, and particularly this new line of salvias that you all have introduced. Yeah, this is our new Picante series. Very similar to our, our salsa, but it's a, a much bigger plant. It's terrific in, as a centerpiece in a container. Uh, give you that height. Yeah, and plant I can see that. It. Give you a tall, spiky element in Absolutely. a container planting. Very good, yeah. yeah. Well, there's a whole range of color here among the salvias, and in Picante, you've got the salmon and the light purple, I understand. That's right. We have the, these two, uh, two colors along with the red. Now, I understand that uh, the salvia of uh, this particular series will perform in partial shade. Yeah, uh, it will. Uh, just make sure when you plant it out that it's already got a spike on it if, it's in, if you're going to plant it in the shade, and then it will continue to bloom. Yeah, it'll continue to push out those flower spikes. But the key, of course, is to make sure that there is a flower present when you plant it. That's right. For more ideas on how you can bring lots of bold color into your garden, check out our website. Another winner in the summer garden category is coleus. Now typically you think of coleus as being a shade plant, but the stained glass work series can take full sun. There's so many styles to choose from the cascading or trailing plants to the bold and upright. I particularly find myself drawn to this variety because of its amazing range of colors. And I have to admit, its interesting foliage shape. It mingles well in the border with other plants such as globe amaranth, lantana, and cannas. I've even paired it up with a whimsical terracotta bird bath in order to bring out the earthy salmon hues in the coleus. One last thing about the stained glass work series. The more sun those plants get, the more colorful they become. Now that we've seen how to spice up the garden using heat tolerant plants, 
Let's step into the kitchen where I'll share a recipe that will definitely fire up your taste buds. That's after the break, so stay with us. Welcome back. Peppers have always been a great way to spice up any meal. Here's a hot pepper sauce recipe I know you'll enjoy. Hot peppers, or red peppers as they're often called, are plentiful during the late summer and early fall, and their range of color, shape, and potency is very wide. Some are mild, and others are explosive, they're so hot. I think it's interesting how these came to be called peppers. We can thank Columbus for it. You see, when he discovered the New World, he was actually looking for India and trade routes to find the black pepper corn. When he saw the pepper plants growing, he mistakenly thought they were the plants that produced peppercorns, and that's why we call these peppers today. I like to use hot peppers in a vinegar sauce served with many dishes, especially vegetables, but I don't like it too hot. This recipe is a great way to preserve peppers, and it's simple and easy to make. Just combine three cups of distilled white vinegar with three cups of whole peppers and add a teaspoon of sea salt. Now let this simmer for about five minutes. You can give this extra flavor by using things like garlic cloves, mustard seed, or whole peppercorns. Now I pack the peppers and vinegar in sterilized glass jars and seal them. For a secure seal, I just put them in a hot water bath for about 10 minutes. One thing to remember when working with hot peppers it's a good idea to wear gloves. If you get some of it on your hands and it begins to burn, the best way to remove it is to rinse your hands with vinegar and then wash them with warm soapy water. Isn't this pot of peppers just a knockout? They'll add so much color to the garden right up until the first hard frost. You know what I like so much about this variety called Medusa? is that it actually isn't hot, so it's nice to have in the garden if you have small children. Well, that's it for today's show. I hope you carry away with you some ideas on how to take care of pests in the garden in a safe and responsible way. If you'd like any of the information in today's show or that recipe for hot pepper sauce, just check out my website. That's pallensmith.com. Until next time, from the garden, I'm Alan Smith. In this garden I dream of a bed of flowers Bluebirds sing of the beauty all around us And every time the sun comes out I can't help but smile oh, No, I can't help but smile.